Hey, hey, welcome entrepreneurial agent listeners. Today, I have the distinct honor and privilege of inviting a great friend on the show today. It's John Elliott. He's the president, founder, and principal broker of Creoteric Commercial Real Estate here in the Norfolk, Virginia area. John, welcome on board the, the show here today, bud. Thank you, Paul. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'd like to be here. Awesome. Well, thank, thanks for coming on, man. So I want to dive into commercial real estate right away. But before we do that, sure. just tell me a little real quick, tell everyone, how'd you get into real estate? I mean, is, was it just kind of right out of school, you jumped into real estate or you've done some other things along the way? Yes and no to that. So actually, yeah, back in high school, I already had an interest in real estate. It was, you know, our early passion. I went to real estate school and got, you know, went through the licensing school right after high school. Kind of got talked into, hey, before you jump into that, you can try the mortgage side of things. Because I had a friend of a friend that owned a mortgage company. And so I did that for, you know, six and a half years or so. Flipped the house. I was a residential landlord for 13 years. And so kind of, you know, yes, yeah, in real estate early, but it wasn't on the commercial side of things. And then really just by, by happenstance, I had a friend of mine who got first citizen of Chesapeake. And so I was at the dinner celebrating that and just happened to be at a table with a couple whose wife was in commercial real estate. So we started talking and, you know, she said, Hey, I really sometimes kind of je am jealous of what you do on the residential side, this, this, and this, but I really like commercial because of this, 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 and the list kept going on. <laughs> and, and the more we chatted about it, I didn't know really thing about commercial. But the more we chatted, the more I realized that everything she was describing really seemed to fit more of what was up my alley as well. So just started blindly reaching out to commercial brokers because I didn't know anybody personally in, in that industry. Most of them did not return my call, as would be expected, I guess. <laughs> I got poking around, but I did get one guy that called me back. He set me up with his broker just really to ask some questions. How can I build my resume? How can I be somebody that you might want to hire in the future type deal. And he said, Hey, go back to school, finish your license and call me when you're done. And so I, I signed up that day, went back to school, went past it. Luckily, first time around, called him from the parking lot said, Hey, you said, call when I passed and I passed. And so he's like, well, come on back in, kind of had a second interview. And he said, I've, I've got an empty office next door and it's yours if you want it. And so that was, that was how it all started right there. Wow. Wow. That's funny. So. So just, I'm sure the answer is yes, because now you're the, the founder and principal broker of a new entrepreneurial venture, Creoteric, but is commercial all it's cracked up to be compared with that list that your friend uh, kind of laid out or was she overselling a little bit? No, you know what, for me, it's, they're very two completely different industries. As you know, as people figure out, they try to do both or if they get in the mix of both. So it really depends on your personality and your wants and your need. And I work with a ton of residential agents and many of them are like, Hey, I have no desire to do a deal that I'm going to get paid in 18 to 24 months. But <laughs> sometimes that's how it works on commercial side. <laughs> For a lot of residential agents, they think it's the silly thing. I wear like there's, Hey, I don't want nothing to do with that. Um, for me personally, it is a hundred percent all it's cracked, cracked up to be. It, I, it's my passion and it's, 100% what I feel like I was meant to do. So I'm super excited to have had that happenstance, you know, dinner and, and going from there, but it's, it's perfect for what I want. Yes. Well, that's awesome. You know, it's, it's interesting. I talk, I talk to a lot of people, interview a lot of people, and it's just amazing how many people sort of by a happenstance like that, kind of an off chance, no, no design, no plan, you know, or they have this moment, this interaction with somebody, you know, just again, it was totally unscripted and, and, and that's what led them down the path of their current career where they're doing really well. The people that I interviewed mm -hmm. were very successful. And so it's just interesting that it, it's just a very common theme that I see. I remember a statistic years ago, I heard that I think it was 70% of people go to college and study of, in a field and they don't even work in the field, you know, the area they studied. And I'm really starting to see that now. And I guess, you know, when you're young, you, you just kind of trying to find your way and you don't know. And, but I'll tip my hat to you to, to open up your mind and, and, and to, to look at that door and just kind of walk through it on faith. Right. And, and, and here you are today. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, you know, the old, the old saying luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Right. And so, you know, in, in that moment, I felt like all of those years, even though it was an industry that I ultimately wasn't successful at and didn't, you know, that's not where I stayed. Throughout those years, I was still building a reputation for me personally, even if it wasn't for I'm going to be a mortgage broker for the rest of my life. So, you know, all that, that hard work and networking and prepping and trying to get myself in that position. And then, yeah, you get that opportunity of you just 
happened to sit down with the right person at a dinner one night. So, you know, that's where, hey, it's, it's lucky that that was there. But if I hadn't gotten myself in that position, if I hadn't made all those follow-up phone calls that never got returned, that big deal, I think it, it's really incumbent on us to take advantage of those opportunities and kind of, yeah, that door opened, but so many people would have looked, you know, would have walked right past the door instead of walking in it. And I try to always, um, try to always keep an open mind about what the next opportunity may be or how, how can I make myself better? So yeah, it was just definitely a happenstance, but I'm, I'm very fortunate that I was able to kind of take advantage of it too. But you were prepared for it. I mean, as, as you said, I mean, you, your antenna was always up. You were looking, you. You kind of knew what you didn't want. You knew what you did want. And someone told me recently, it's become my favorite saying of late, is that exposure brings, you know, creates opportunity, right? Right. right. So if you're not, you know, if you're not, I mean, entrepreneurs are exposing themselves. You, you've got, and the thing about an entrepreneur, and I can guess this about you, that you've got a lot of experience in a lot of areas. You could probably do a lot of things pretty well, but it's a matter of focusing in on what you really, like you mentioned earlier, your passion, and you really are passionate about this commercial real yeah. estate space. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw too on your website, you were top 40 under 40 this year. Yeah. Yeah. That was very cool. That's been, I'm, I'm really not a big, like pat myself on the back, accolade seeker, that type yeah. of thing. I don't, I don't have plaques all over my walls and everything, <laughs> but, uh, at the same time, that is an award that for whatever reason, maybe cause I, I know a handful of people have gotten it and I know the resumes of the recipients from previous years. Yeah. Um, and I really respect everybody that I know that's on that list. And so it has been one, and maybe it's also the challenge of, hey, you got to do it before you're 40 or sorry about your list. That's, that's one that I've, I have always eyeballed and thought, man, that would be really cool to get on that list. And I was fortunate to barely sneak through at age 39 and get it this year. So that was, that was very cool. Well, congrats. Congrats. I, I'm you. actually, I'm actually an alumnus too. I got it in 2006. Are you really? Yeah, hey. 2006. So I'm a, I'm a few years older than you, but, but yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, so, awesome. yeah, so. So digging in now, let's see. So let's talk about your company, this firm, Creoterra. You mm-hmm. guys, you guys say you're doing real estate differently. Okay. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about that. How do you do it differently? Why do you do it differently? What's the whole, what, what's your angle here? Yeah. So I'll actually take it one step back to relate even the name to our vision. So Creoterra, the whole way we came up with that is I have two, two partners, uh, Sean Rooney and Jonathan Melvin. And when we first started, when we seriously got into, okay, we're going to do this. Let's set our plan. Here, here's what we want to do. John asked me, he said, okay, what are you thinking about for a name? And I said, man, I'm really struggling with the name, but I know what I want the company to be. And I want, there were, there were so many things that led me to want to start this company. And there's a lot of, in my opinion, there's a lot of antiquated practices on the very old industry. Um, that I thought needed to be modernized from commission splits to how agents are treated, how clients are treated to processes, all kinds of different things that over the years, I've just kind of built my own list of, man, if I had my place, I would do things like this. So, you know, I told Sean, I said, I mean, I don't have a name. I'm struggling with it, but I want the name to reflect that. And if you look around the industry, so many of the brokers, and I'm not knocking anybody, they're very old brokers and I was done at the time, but most of the brokers are named after someone. It's the founder. Mm-hmm. Right. And for me, I said, I want my name to, I don't want my name to have anything to do with it. I want it to be, to reflect a team first mentality. And I want it to reflect the, the vision and the mission that we have of building a team and doing things differently. So John actually found the word neoteric and neoteric, depending on which, you know, dictionary you look in, it's basically defined as uh, someone who advocates fresh ideas for an old industry. Hmm. And I mean, it's literally in line with what I described. So we, so we said, all right, well, we got to start there. Right. So when we, our next meeting, we were whiteboarding some ideas and we did, we had some more basic stuff and some, you know, the neo terrorists who really stuck with us, but CRE is the industry standard abbreviation for commercial real estate. You'll see that everywhere in the industry. So I said, Hey, why don't we, why don't we make our own word? We're making our own thing. We're doing, we want to do this different. We want to modernize this company to be something completely different than anybody else offers. Hey, let's just make our own name too. Let's make it Creoteric, which since it's our own word, we can make our own definition. (laughs) So we're, we're literally a company who is advocating fresh ideas for an old industry, you know? So Creoteric is the word that, that we organically developed to reflect the mission of the company. 
So kind of a, kind of a long answer to your question, but I, I love to explain that story. And I will tell you my marketing lady hated it at first. <laughs> we have a, we have a marketing company handling their social media and, and yeah. you know, kind of give some pointers. And, and she said, no, you're going to have to tell that story every time somebody asks about your company name, because nobody's going to know what Creoteric is. And I'm like, well, of course they're not. It's not a word, right. but I want to tell that story because that's what the company is all about. So I was excited about it. She was not quite as excited about marketing a brand new word from her standpoint. But for me, it was exactly what I wanted to do. I want to tell you the story. I want you to know why we started this. Well, you know, it's, that, that's pretty cool. So Sean is quite the wordsmith finding that I'll say that, but you know, that's, that's emblematic of again, entrepreneurship, right? Entrepreneurs take lead into gold. We're modern day alchemists, right? So you've created these two, these two unrelated sort of words, put them together to create the vision and, or maybe not create the vision, but really capture the vision that you had, right? Sure. Or describe yeah. the vision that you had, which is, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. I mean, it, it, when you, when you talk about it like that, it, it makes a lot of sense. So. So talk a little bit about what are some of those fresh ideas I, and I'm with you not knocking, you know, other, you know, commercial real estate companies, but I, I agree. A lot of them have been established for quite some time and they seem to mm -hmm. be kind of blue blood kind of, you know, as we would say, um, in the book blue ocean, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, they've been out there for a long time, kind of doing things the same way. Right. Times. Yeah. And, and just to be fair to, to the other brokerages, it's not that anybody else, you know, Hey, nobody else is doing this the right way. It's just, I saw a hold to do it a different way. Sure. And so for a lot of it is, you know, and again, just to really generalize, since obviously not everyone is like this, but I saw a lot of very top heavy brokerage, you know, your, your top tier, your brokers and associate brokers and that type deal are getting a, a much heavier reward for the work while a lot of your lower level are putting in the work and not really getting the same reward equivalent to the work they're putting in. I think commission split, generally speaking, across the board are super antiquated. Mm -hmm. So a very big part of my model was to have the best split in the business. And I do hundred percent, hundred percent. I have the best, it, you know, at least in our market, I have the best split. Um, I don't think you have to take 50% of an agent's money until they make half a million dollars before they start getting 55%. That's crazy to me. So we start at 60%. We start tearing up when you gross a hundred thousand dollars that smokes anybody else in our business. But outside of that, just the culture, there's a whole lot, you know, how much money did you make? How much are you making me? How many hours a day are you putting in? Mm. And in a lot of cases, I kept hearing the same, same complaints from, from really good agents at, at some good brokerages who just didn't feel appreciated and yeah. didn't feel like their reward was equivalent to their work they're putting in, you know, catching some slack or, oh, you're going out to lunch. How are you going to make money if you're out to lunch? And, you know, no real camaraderie with their fellow agents or their brokers. There's nothing offsite. There's nothing non-real estate related that are joined together. And so, so, so Jonathan and Sean, my partners own a residential brokerage and have built an amazing company. And I really envied what they did. And I said, I would like to do that on the commercial side. So. From the culture standpoint, we are doing, you know, a, a tropical, you hit, you hit your certain criteria and you're going to all expenses paid tropical vacation once a year with your spouse. Company's covering it, right? Nice. Uh, we're doing offsite stuff. We're doing weekend stuff with your family. Stuff that has nothing to do with real estate, but just for me to say, hey, I appreciate the work you're putting in. I'm going to reward you and I want you to enjoy life as much as you enjoy coming to work. And I want all of that to have just this nice synergy where, where, you know, I appreciate what you're doing for this team, not for John. So, okay. I'm, I, I'm tracking that. That's great. So, so really an integrated approach that it's all about, Hey, this is part of your life, but it's not your all consuming. It's not your all consuming life, right? Real estate. Correct. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have a family, we have relationships At the end of the day. If we, if we value that first and put people first, then the, the real estate will take care of itself. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I feel like I, and really in any industry, I'm going to obviously bring it to a specific industry, but in, in the industry, I believe if you take care of people yeah. first and foremost, then the money and the reputation and the growth and all of that stuff will happen if that's what you're, you're trending toward, but you really you have to take care of the person as a human first and foremost. And people know if, if you really do care about them or if it, you know, when it's genuine and, you know, I think 
it, it just creates that, and, you know, hey, we all want to help each other grow and we're all going to be happy when the other person succeeds. And that's, that's really what I'm trying to build. No, that's awesome. Yeah. You said the word culture. I mean, I mean, culture is everything. People, people quit. I mean, statistics and studies are shown people quit managers and bosses, you know, but, but the right culture will attract the right people. And you see it on sports teams all the time. I mean, some teams have just a great culture and they just win and they just have fun doing it. And, and some teams, they just can't seem to get their act together and it's a cultural thing. Right. Absolutely. So. All right. Well, let's switch gears a little bit. Talk to me about, give us some examples. Tell, tell us about some of the, some of the folks that you've helped here with your, your commercial solutions. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'm, I've been largely focused on local businesses and a lot of that's organic where, you know, you, you help one business and they tell their friend who owns another local business and, and it kind of goes from there. So a large amount of the, the deals that I do, I'm representing the business owners and I'm finding them space for them to leave or building to purchase. So I'm on that side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, now with the company established, certainly want to add more of a landlord portfolio to than I typically have had, or we're well-rounded as a company. So just put that out there. But as far as what I've done in the past, um, some of the local tenants that, you know, that I guess are a little more popular that you may know, Iron Asylum Gym, I did their second and third locations and currently looking for, for the Garage Brewery, one top mm-hmm. brew in the area. Uh, I know them. Last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Too well, um, I think, actually. But if it was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rusted nail, best one ever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I I, uh, I helped put that one in. Greenbrier Pale Horse Coffee is another one. They I did not know them before the the original one, kind of more near Hickory. But I did the Greenbrier location for them. Um, a couple of franchisees that I'm working with now, like uh, Strong and Everbull, started to get into to more of the franchise referral. But on the, on my website, I've got, you know, a list of some of the different ones that I've represented, you know, and, and go on and check them. But it's, it's really, that's my favorite part is that I get to be there every step of the way for these like new businesses or added locations. Um, somebody like Oishi Burger was, it was a really cool one just because they're, they're two guys who went out on a limb. One, one guy worked at the shipyard as an engineer and <laughs> quit to pursue the dream of opening this restaurant. And just happenstance, another one of my clients who had Volcano Sushi wanted to sell his business. I made the connection with them both and put Oishi in. And now, if you haven't tried Oishi Burger, got to try Oishi Burger. <laughs> They're amazing, amazing guys. I've opened a couple more businesses and food trucks that then too. But but just seeing all like these different businesses from the ground up where knowing the backstory and how mm-hmm. scared sometimes they are to make this leap or like garage brewery was a TRICARE doctor's office when we went in there and looked at it <laughs> and it took a lot of vision to say, okay, we're going to put up walls here. We're going to rip this drop ceiling down. We got yeah. 19, 19 feet to the ceiling. If we take these out, we got to rip these offices, we got bathrooms over here. And it was a total from scratch vision yeah. that you would never, ever have imagined what's in there now. And to be, be there for every step of that and, and help them get set up for success. And then for years later, to go in there and, and have a beer or to go to a week and have a burger, or I'm a, I go to Iron Asylum gym to work out, like to help my client then along the way and know that, you know, Hey, I, I have a little bit to do with this and had a front row seat watching them, you know, hit these next tiers. It's, it's super exciting for me. Well, I can tell it's, I can speed off your energy. So, and, and I'm thinking that, so you've seen a lot from your, your experience in the residential mortgage space, real estate space, being a, being a, a landlord yourself and now commercial and all this experience that the commercial is that, that experience a lot different for an entrepreneur, right? I mean, it's a lot different than going out to buy a house, right? Where you, you go yeah. around with your agent, you find a property, put a, a bid in, it's all, it's accepted and you're in the house in 30 days or whatever. Right. There's right. a whole lot more that goes into commercial, right? That's for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. So on the commercial side, one, the community is much, much smaller. So I think mm-hmm. residential agents are somewhere last I heard was between nine and 10,000 agents kind of in our regional market. Yeah. The commercial industry, really, there's a couple hundred probably that, that <laughs> truly do a fair amount of business. Yeah. So we're constantly working with the same people over and over and over. Um, so you get to know them on a more personal level where, where a lot of, you know, Hey, here's what I'm looking for. And sometimes you can get leads on stuff that isn't on the market yet, but mm-hmm. will be coming to the market. It's a lot, a lot more relationship based for one to even 
find some of these spaces, but then, Absolutely. yeah, you're negotiating, you know, what the landlord might do for some tenant improvement, or you're then now you're negotiating some free rent time for your client to be able to get in there and do their build out, get operational before they start paying rent, mm -hmm. negotiating what commissions are and when they're paid. And so a lot of times, by the time you go through negotiations, and then sometimes the landlord has to do their build out portion, and then your client gets in, does their build out, and right. you got the free rent time. It's unfortunately not real uncommon that, like I said earlier, you know, 18, 24 months later, yeah. you're getting a check for, for the deal that you started a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, so that's, you know, it's definitely a different ballgame for sure. But it's a lot of, but as you said, you, you really, in that period of time, get to know your clients well, right? I mean, you, yeah. you really, I mean, it seems to me there's, it's, there's, there's more art and relationship and there's a lot of science in it too. You got to obviously match the need with the opportunity and what's available, but Mm -hmm. There's a lot of art there, right? And understanding where they are and looking out, say, okay, well, this is going to be a six, 12, 18, maybe 24 month process. Where do we project you to be in that period of time? You know, you have to look at future growth and just all kinds of things, right? That, that you guys, these are conversations you're having with your clients before they sign on any, you know, any commitment, right? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. But, you know, because I, I genuinely take interest and, you know, I'm, I'm invested It's not even whether it's my family, whether it's my friends, whether it's my clients, I'm really invested in trying to be a positive influence and see another succeed and, and helping yeah. that happen wherever I can. So when I'm working with these clients, almost all of the time, I end up, we're, we're friends by the time it's over yeah. as much as we are, you know, having that client relationship. And so I, I really enjoy getting to the end of the road. And again, it makes it more enjoyable for me to then go and support that business after they're open and help them share the word. And, mm -hmm. and I do, you know, I'll do giveaways on my page and client appreciation events and things like that. And it's always at a business that I helped, you know, them get started so right. I can help give back. But it, that goes back to, to building those personal relationships and not, just, I, I know some agents that will do a five-year lease and be like, all right, see you in four and a half years. <laughs> right. And for, you know, for, my renewal reminder comes up, right? My calendar. Is, is exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And again, people see through that. That's not, that's not authentic. You just want to make money <laughs> and we all want to make money, but at the sure. same time, like I want to continue that relationship and let you know that I'm, I'm here for you from here until year five. And if you're mm. if you decided to get out of the business in year five, I'm still going to be your friend. You know, it's not all yeah. about making a few bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes it a lot more interesting, right? It makes life a lot more fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I absolutely. mean, cause you're not, cause you could have done a lot of things. I mean, you could go do some nine to five grind somewhere and hate your job and hate your life and all that. Right. But you chose to, to do the entrepreneurial thing and start and run and grow a business. You're probably working, you know, who knows how many hours, but you love it. Right. Dude, yeah. Stupid amount right now. <laughs> but, but yes, absolutely. I do love it. And, and you know what, I'm, I'm blessed that a lot of these clients that, that I've, I've been able to work with and represent they're in different industries, but then I get to learn a lot about all these different industries and I get yeah. to see what is their growth plan and what are they doing that work. And it, it all, even though that's, it's not, Hey, what can I get from you? You still end up benefiting just from being around motivated, smart people all the time too. Yeah. So it yeah. Really helped me too. You become like the people you hang around with mostly. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Every time. What do you see in, do you, are you seeing any trends right now in commercial space and in a particular in the, in the Virginia, you know, the Hampton Roads area where you are? Yeah, I would say the, the, the biggest thing for me, and it's trended this way for a while too. So this isn't breaking news necessarily, but the industrial kind of flex market has been really thin for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's pretty hot space, especially in your smaller, you know, we'll say 5,000 square feet or, or below, just not a lot of vacancy. Last I looked, the occupancy rate on that type of space in our market was around 98%, a little over wow. 98%. So that's been the biggest challenge for me probably is I get a lot of calls from business owners who say, Hey, I, I need a warehouse space with, you know, 18 foot ceilings and dock loading and two roll up doors and whatever. Right. And, and we put all this stuff down and you're like, well, that just doesn't exist. You know, we're going <laughs> to hang in there. It's, it's going to take some time and you know, you got to be patient and really kind of dig into the weeds and try to get something before it. But yeah, that, I would say that's probably the biggest trend, you know, for me and, and then really over the past couple of years when the rates were crazy, stupid low, yeah. the cap rates went, went down. So cap, you know, for those unfamiliar with cap rates, basically just your return on your investment, you know, what, what kind of return you're getting. And. So we got down to levels that just weren't attractive unless you're doing it for tax reasons for the most part. And now that rates have 
started picking up. There's a little bit more starting to come on the market. Cap rates are starting to look a little bit more reasonable. Mm. So those those would be the two things I would probably highlight on the trend. Yeah, yeah. So would you say we're heading back into more of a more of a more balanced market than we've been with the COVID years and all that? Yeah, I would say. I mean, the leasing. I'll be honest. The leasing side stay pretty strong for mm-hmm. for me and most of the you know the other brokers that I, I work with and talk to. Other than when it first shut down, there was just so much uncertainty that right everything shut down. At least for me personally. But once it went to bounce back, you know that wasn't too bad. There's still going to be a little bit of ups and downs, and there's smart people on both sides of it. I I tend to feel like probably maybe the tail end of Q1 and Q2 next year we'll probably find some kind of solid middle ground where it won't be so wavy yeah but but for the most part it, it's pretty solid right now yeah 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 it's a good time right as i tell people you know the you know the, the best time is the time that you have right it's now because mm-hmm. you might not have tomorrow and you know the economy could be up the economy could be down you know but you know you got to do something right yeah exactly you got to do something well, John, do you guys do, what do you do for fun? We're wrapping up here. Tell us something interesting. Yeah. You mentioned the gym, so I can see that. You're yeah. obviously a, yeah. at the gym a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. No, that, that, that's kind of like my reading first thing in the morning. My coffee is, is mm-hmm. like my peaceful time. And then my kind of de-stress time is, is the gym. Six, seven days a week, I'm getting something, whether I'm, I'm lifting or playing sports or running or it, there's something generally pretty much every day. And that's kind of my my like Wusa moment, you know, to get all that out before I get into the work day. Yeah. Uh, so that for sure. I'm a big UVA guy. So I have season tickets for football and basketball. Go up there with family and friends and catch a lot of games. Still still love playing pickup sports. So I'll get out and play flag football or pick up basketball and stuff like that. I like to stay active. Um and then really just generally being outside. I'm a summertime guy. So mm-hmm. give me all of the beach and pool parties and <laughs> roof festivals and all right. that stuff. I'm in. Yeah. I like right. to be out mingling and catching the spread here for sure. Nice. Nice. So you're in the right area for that, right? Down yeah. At the beach. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, John, this has been great. We, we're coming up on, uh, on the end of our time. Tell, yep. tell everyone how, and we'll get this in the show notes, tell everyone how they can get in contact with you when they need some commercial real estate. They want to buy that building or lease or put something on the market to sell or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. You, so you can reach out to me directly for sure. And the easiest, I'm, I'm honestly really easy to get in touch with. I'm always on the move. So it may take me a little bit of time to get back to you, but it'll always be like the same day, next day at the absolute latest. I, I don't leave anybody hanging. So you can text or call my cell, which I'll tell you is 757 You can shoot me an email, which is just John, J-O-N, at creoteric.com. And then if you want to follow the company page, which would be amazing, I would appreciate you know anyone who follows and shares. We have LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram uh, for Creoteric, the business itself. And so we have quite a few deals that are all rolling. It takes, like I said, it takes a little bit of time for these deals to roll over, but we have a bunch of them that are now coming down the home stretch. So over the next couple few months, you'll start, you'll start seeing some really cool projects that I can't really put out there yet, but are coming <laughs> up. So, so follow our pages. I'll be doing giveaways. We'll be doing a client appreciation event slash creative launch party type deal. So a lot of really cool things coming up on our social media pages too. Well, make sure that you you tag me when the party's at Pale Horse or the Garage Brewery because I'm a, a regular hangout at both places. <laughs> All right, well, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you another one right over by Pale Horse. I'm gonna give a little plug to one of my newer newer clients, but Deep Bird is going in Summit Point, right across from the Green Bar Pale Horse, and that's a chicken and whiskey restaurant. They'll be opening this week, so I can put that what? plug in there for them. And uh, and yeah, so that that's the spot you got to put on the radar too. <laughs> Okay, neat bird. It's chicken and whiskey. Yeah, how amazing okay. is that? Hey, I mean, <laughs> how can you go <laughs> wrong, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, just that combination has got my curiosity peaked, right? I'll tell my wife. She's like, "Oh, that'll be good. Let's go." You know, who knows? Yeah, um, I was, yeah. When he when I talked to him and he said that, I was like, "Business plan? I don't need business plan. I'm in. Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, John, this has been super fun. Really Appreciate you taking some time with us. Yeah, and again, yeah. we'll get this all the show notes for you, so people can click on the link and they get all your social media handles and phone cool. number and all that jazz. All, all right? right, I appreciate it. All right, man, have an awesome day. Thanks, Paul. You too. Go crush it. Yep.